What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Legacy Cube draft here on Magic the Gathering slash Twitch dot internet. So Axel just said, you know how the card mission briefing looked underwhelming? Well, you can cast Ancestral and Living End with it. If that's true, that's pretty impressive. I don't know if you saw my post earlier. You should check it out. Where is it? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I might recommend to jazz on me. Oh, it's Bill Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purchase in Jazz, Fantastic Home, you can also get in Fantastic 180 GLP with limited edition. Oh, I like oh, I like a limited edition vinyl. Bill Evans is good stuff. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna join this queue. Hi Bob, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Which of the following statements about video games is true? Question one options. Most are designed by women. That is not true, unfortunately. Most people who play video games are women. That is I, I also don't think that is true. Females are more underrepresented in video games than on television. I be that seems true. Video games are regarded as sports by most colleges. That also seems. I think, I think only one of those is true. But I would, I would love to be proven wrong. And here we go. We got Soren Solemn Visitor. This is, what this is. This might be the worst Soren. I think even worse than Soren Markov. I don't like this Soren at all. Negative two to make a vampire, then you plus one, and then you negative two. It's like it's, it has the same abilities as Jace, right? It starts at four. I guess Jace starts at three. Does Jace start at three or four? I think Jace starts at four. Architect of thought. Yep, all right, four. Yeah, so they both start at four. They have a negative two that gets you some form of card advantage. And then the plus one is kind of like a meh. And then the negative. Also, they all have art, too. That is interesting. I wonder if that got fixed. Fascinating. I'm, I think it's definitely Eugene here. It doesn't commit us to any colors. And it's Ugin. Oh, wow. Planeswalkers have art again. <laughs> what a time to be alive. We could take this Sphinx's Revelation, but I feel like I've taken this a million times so far. It just says you can cast and doesn't give it a cost. And you gave me the courage to dive into Legacy Draft. I, Bob, that's awesome, dude. I'm so glad to hear that. That's great. That's all I could ever ask for. If I could encourage other people to, to play Magic or play different forms of Magic, or just improve your, your current Magic game, that's all I could ask for. That's the best. Steven C., thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back. Ten months. My God. It's almost like... It's almost a year. 24 seconds. Either Vindicator Sphinx or Revelation, I think. I don't think any of these other cards. Maybe Solemn Simulacrum. I do like a Solemn Simulacrum. All right. I'll take the card I didn't actually give enough credit to. Oh, no. Sorry, Johnny. You didn't make the cut. Greg, I'm, I'm very curious to know the answers to that question. There's a lot of good lands in here. We could just take... Uh, I feel like we draft green so frequently, but we draft everything so frequently. I mean, I guess if you draft this set like three times a day, it's it's going to all run together. Tundra is so good, though. What if that Sphinx's Rev comes back? People people pass Sphinx's Rev all the time. Asalamu Simulacrum. Yeah, Asalamu Simulacrum to you. I think at least number two and three in that question are true. At least, what's number two? Most people, oh, the um, females were underrepresented in video games. I think, yeah, I think that's definitely true. Uh, most are designed, most people play video games for women. Really? Is that the one you think is true? That doesn't feel true to me. Tooth and nail. Tooth and nail feels true. That feels like the truest thing I've ever seen. Actually, I was going to check and see if I had tooth and nails. I can do that right now while I'm here. I'm trying to get a bunch of cards to finish my cube because I've done a lot of cube updates and like, boy, have I ever been uh, inspired by cube here. I don't think I have tooth and nails. That's very strange. I'm not comfortable with that at all. How do I not have tooth and nail? I don't have a single tooth and nail. It just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we're taking tooth and nail. Uh, I don't have a list yet. I'm s I don't have a list yet. I'm still finalizing the list myself. 
Um, I like Mind Stone because it does let us play a turn three Solemn Simulacrum. But if we are green, I feel like it's very likely to get more effects like this, whereas Acidic Slime, not so much. Over the weekend, we drafted for M19 and Sword Championship and drafted Sweet Model Black Graveyard, de Graveyard Marshall deck. That ended up being 41 cards. My friend scoffed me for 41, and I told him it was fine. He built Blue Red Mill, and I was the only one to beat him. Who's the idiot? <laughs> yeah, you, you stupid idiot, Kevin. God. Kevin. What a dummy. The only people who scoff at you for playing 41 cards are the people who read that 41 cards is strictly worse than 40 cards by their favorite pro players, and they don't actually know why it's bad. So... Is there some sort of streamer's cup yearly? Would be nice to see a special tournament. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I uh, couldn't tell you, though. I think it's Cold Steel Heart. It's not great. Except when it comes to PPTQ this year, I saw the most girls I ever watched. Wow, oh, that's a good amount. It's not a lot, but it's a good amount. Does that make sense? Four is not a lot, but I think it's... Uh, if the number is increasing, I think that's just good. I did a 720 card cube for my store. Fun building, fun to play. Just turned out a large project for the amount of players. Had. Oh, man. No, I just like having a cube together. I just like to keep a cube together. Just because it's a... I mean, it's just a cool thing to have. Um, I like Bayloth. I also like Dragonlord Atarka. We also have Tooth and Nail. I'm going to take the Atarka. Hmm. Hmm. Well, the Sphinx is Revelation. What type of cube you're building? Uh, it's kind of like a powered cube, but similar. But, I mean, it's not going to be exact. I like 360 cubes. The Magic Online Vintage Cube is 540 cards, I believe. And I'm not a big fan of that because... Uh, you don't get to see all the cards. Like, if you're trying to... If you pick Deceiver, Exarch, and Pestermite, you literally could never see Splinter Twin. I'll just take Den Protector. I was going to take Blooming Marsh, but it's probably Den Protector. Um... You could literally just never see Splinter Twin or Kiki Jiki because they might not be in the three. The other people have no respect. Now you don't get it. Now you lost your privileges. Um, I'm going to finish this thought eventually. You may never see those cards because they're not... Because an eight-man... Every eight-man cube only has 360 cards in it. So anything above that, which is 180 cards, just might not be in the packs. So... It's weird to me, not weird, but I just don't like uh, cubes that are over 360 because if you have all these strategies in the cubes, especially combo decks, um, it's possible you just might not even see the cards. So then you're like, well, I took these two cards and they're pretty useless. I mean, they're not useless. Like, a Pestermite's fine, DC Rex Rex's fine, but like, they're underwhelming in a powered cube when you can't get the other parts of those combos. Yeah, I actually need 349 copies of Consecrated Sphinx for my cube, if you guys could help me out. Considering the cube is 360 cards, that, that means I have 11 copies of Consecrated Sphinx. That's not true, but I just wanted to I just wanted to seem like I was on my way there. Like I was making progress towards it. Right now I have a, a cart full of cards from Card Kingdom. We'll see. It's got to be Garrick Wildspeaker, right? Four fifty is weird though, because like you still, like I said, you still have an extra ninety cards that you're just not going to see in every cube draft. I feel like we're in the right colors, but I don't like that we're in the right colors. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely not making a cube without Mystic Snake. I, did I say that? Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, there'll be 359 Consecrated Sphinxes in one Mystic Snake. I mean, if I don't take this, I'll be taking, like, Land of War Elves, right? I think it's definitely this, but... Oh, they're just, they're just giving us our favorite things. I'm going to take this Woodfall Primus, because I bet either one of these will come back. There's also a breeding pool in the first pack, and that might come back as well. 
This is a good Nissa. This is the best sword in the cube, in my opinion, and this is a Sylvan carry on it. Also worth noting that um, um, Mystic Snake is in the Vintage Cube on Magic Online. So, didn't I just watch this video? Yeah, that's the that's the secret. It's all videos. Also, there's a late Pestermite, but I guess it's like fourth pick, third pick. Woodfall Sphinx, and I don't even like Den Protector. I feel like it's Sylvan Carry added. We want the extra colors if we plan on doing anything with like Consecrated Sphinx or the other guy. I also do feel like it's Nissa. We have Tooth and Nail too. I'm gonna take the Nissa. Well, Nissa might have wield. I don't know. What can you do? Overgrown Tomb and a Watery Grave. The two Sultai lands in this pack and a Kiora. Man. This card seems insane to me. I don't understand the ability. Like. I pay three and exile an Ulamog from my hand at the end of your turn. I draw a card and then exile an Ulamog, and then I make a copy of Ulamog. Like, I could do this EOT, and next turn just instant speed attack with it, and if you don't have an answer for this. And it's also at the beginning of the next end step, so even if you kill this in response, the Ulamog still gets to swing. I don't understand this card. Like, it actually seems way more powerful than it is. Or maybe it is, maybe it seems way more power maybe maybe it is that powerful but I just it seems really powerful. Oh, I like a far seek especially with these other colors. I mean the only problem I see with it is that you have to have um like the creature in your hand, right? But it lets you loot at the very least. Like at the very least, you're looting every turn. So I mean, like I just don't understand. Oh, interesting. I like sprawl. I think it's just Dragon Lord Atarka. We're taking a bunch of things that let us splash like one or one or over. I don't like Sprawl that much. Actually, actually we have Garrick. I'll take the Sprawl. Oh, Rampant Growth. Okay. Okay. Could also be just Bloodbraid Elf. I'm going to take the Rampant Growth. Maelstrom Pulse. Sure. I don't like this because it's not a forest and I really want to... I'm, I'm really high on forests. I'll take with Trigon Predator. That's a, one of the worst swords. Sort of War and Peace is one of the worst swords in the queue, in my opinion. Cultivate came back. That's pretty cool. Cultivate and Kodama's Reach? What a time to be alive. Dr. Funkburger MD, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Sword of Body and Mind came back. You guys have no respect. Um, I'm really high on forests. Oh, Arcane Artisan came back? All right, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to try it out. We need more creatures, though. We only have, like, Dragon Lord's Ark and Woodfall Primus that we really care about right now. Um, I've been keeping up with the spoilers. I haven't, actually. I, for some reason, they're too overwhelming for me recently. Well, wow. actually, I was going to take this guy a lot earlier, so that's pretty cool. Why is the full set being revealed on Wednesday? And also, I'm in discussions with Ollie about doing a... Starting up freshly brewed with... Uh, with the uh, with Return to Ravnica set review. Guilds of Ravnica set review. Is it just natural order here? Natural order for, like, even Woodfall Primus seems very, very good. I think it's got to be natural order, right? Now we just take all the good greenies. <sighs> Deranged Hermit. Yeah, definitely not taking a, a, a triple triple blue Kiki Jiki. I think natural order is stronger than 
Like, natural order is like, okay, so all the creatures we... Like, okay, so let's say we want to play sneak attack, and we want to put one of these... These are the only creatures that we can sneak attack into play, right? I would much rather just have natural order and keep them in play forever. Isn't that just better? That just seems better, right? Like, natural order is just a permanent sneak attack. Eh, Drain's Hermit's pretty good, I guess. Could be Beast Within. Um, oh, yes, the Loading Ready Run pre-release. Something I will likely never be invited to. I think Tender Shoot Dryad's very, very good. I I also haven't been impressed with Tatiova. I've played with Tatiova and I played against Tatiova, and in both times I was kind of like, eh. With Arcane Artisan and Trigon Predator, we're probably just putting you in the main deck. I don't think that's really that. I don't think it's even close. I could also see splashing for Maelstrom Pulse. Like all we have to do is Temple Garden is good with Farseek, but if we're not playing white. Like, I don't know if we're really playing the white for the Dragon Lord of Tarkar. We can just actually... Did we not take Sylvan Carry added? I thought we did. Oh, I think we took Nyssa and then the, the sword tabled. I think it's actually Dryad. Dryad's actually was insane the last time we played it. Also, Shaman of the Forgotten Ways is pretty good here as well. Probably better than Jade Lay Ranger. Hmm. Hope you guys didn't see me spill uh, water all over myself. My god, this is why they don't invite me to things. Look at that. Gull darn savage. I'm going to take Shaman. Like, turn three Shaman. Turn two Shaman is, is pretty good as well. But turn three Shaman into... Uh, into Consecrated Sphinx is where you want to be. Uh, I don't have beef with loading ready, ready run. I don't actually... I, I think those guys are great. I just... Uh, I don't know. And I was even in one of their Pro Tour videos. Like, at the at one of the PTs at the Van Vancouver Pro Tour. I actually was in the, one of the videos. I don't know. And then I sent them an email and I was like, hey, I would love to help you guys with your with your stuff. I think your content's cool. Like, here's um here's some issues where I saw like I could see I could see some improvement here, and this is how. They never responded, and like I've just never been selected for like their little their little things. It's just I don't know. It's not beef per se, it's just a matter of like eh. Could be Court of Calling. I think it could just be Bayou. None of these cards are great for us. I don't really care about Glare. We also don't have a ton of creatures right now. Well, if you're Silverheart, just could be fine. I'm probably not playing both of these. A lot of blue-black fixing lands, but not a lot of, uh... Harmonize is nice, but I don't think we need card advantage in this deck. I would like Channeler Initiate. It's another two-drop we could use. Oh, this is a good Vraska, too. Hmm, that's nice. Oh, Thraggy. Alright. Alright, well, this pack picked up pretty well. They have a lot of people trying to get on to that sort of stuff. I mean, like, I'm, I've never actively tried to get on, but, I mean, it feels it feels better to add more people than having, uh, you know, no, no offense, but, like, Jimmy Wong or uh, The Professor for the 19th time, I guess. <laughs> Just seems like a... Might be, might be better for the community to branch out a little bit, but... We could just splash Nicol Bolas. We're already playing black cards, red cards, and blue cards. I'm going to take it. Oh, Temple Garden came back. It's actually reasonable to just play. Banishing Light's good. Court of Calling. Okay. Well, Glare came back. All right. Well, this is this deck's really interesting. Twenty-eight 
29 cards. I don't actually think we have enough creatures to sacrifice this. We have like literally two guys, two green guys. I mean, those guys are in California. Like, it's not, that's really not that much easier. It's a flight either way, right? Like, I mean, they're flying from one place or they're flying from another. Like, it's it's still a flight. I, I mean, like, that just seems like a thing people say. Like, oh, it's probably easier. I mean, I go to, I go to the, the I go to kayak, I book a flight, I get there. Like, okay. You know, it's, I don't think that's a, that's a genuine defense. Do we have plenty of tokens? Where are our tokens coming from? I mean, Master of the Wild Hunt is a token, but uh, that's, I mean, this these two these two make tokens. Other than that, like, we really don't have that many tokens. Like, if I have Vraska, I'd rather be attacking with guys or Glare. Glare doesn't uh, Glare doesn't tap lands too, which is pretty big. Yeah, Garrick make dudes, makes dudes, but if I'm tapping down things with a 3-3, three, three, I'd rather just... Uh, <laughs> if, we're, if we're making tokens with sword, that means we're connecting, and I, I'm, I'm, I don't think... Uh, I don't think me tapping down one of their creatures is going to be super relevant there. It's very much a win more card. I don't think we have enough creatures to try this out, unfortunately. Like, we really just have these guys, and like I'd rather not have them die. This is going to be a, a crazy deck. I, I don't think... I mean, like... Okay, so the, the creatures we can sacrifice to a to a natural order uh, before turn four are literally... Okay, stop... Literally stop highlighting every freaking card in the deck. Oh my god, are you serious? Look at this. I'm clicking on one card. You guys see it. And then when I move it... Oh my god. Magic Online, you are hot garbage. Let me try to add a card and then... Oh, now, now it works. Okay, now we did it. Uh, Trigon Predator, Chandler Initiate, Shaman. So, like, any... Well, I'm going to say before turn four, because you want to cast it on four, ideally. I mean, at least we can get to, like, tender... If we get to, like, five or six, like, it's fine. We can do that. But we really don't have... We have these three creatures that we can realistically find and get value off of. I'd rather just tooth and nail into them. You tell me sprawl because it's just I just don't think it's that great. Um because I'm gonna run a a, a, a few non forests in the deck, like f four or five. I, I guess that's not a real good reason, but I just don't think it's good to like we have a ton of we have a ton of ramp, like And you have to pick a color with it, and I don't actually think I'm gonna know what color I wanna pick at the time, so I'd rather just have it be a different card. One, two, three. Like all of this is ramp. I mean, I can see this being a 16 land deck. I mean, I can see the same thing with Cold Steel Heart. Like, I could see taking Cold Steel Heart out just for that same reason. Because you have to pick a specific color. Uh, it's not... Is Remoke even worth running for planes? Yeah, of course, because we have a Temple Garden for one thing, so it's easy to, to just search for it with the Far Seek. Um, secondly, we have Cold Steel Heart, we have Shaman of the Forgotten Ways, we have Cultivate, and all you have to do is put one planes in the deck. Solemn Simulacrum. Rampant Growth, Far Seek, Chandler Initiate. Like, all of these cards produce white mana. Plus, you can tooth and nail for it. Like, there's literally no reason not to play it. Oh, yeah, we're definitely running Nicky B in the main. 100%. I guess you do have to pick a color with Rampant Growth. That's a good point. But, I mean, like, it gets a land onto the board. Like. I don't know. I mean, maybe there's an argument for playing Utopia Sprawl over Rampant Growth. I guess that's a good point. I actually like that point. 
We already got red and black. We can just play Colagon's Command. Yeah, I actually think Sprawl's probably better than Cold Steel Heart. I don't know. All right, we'll play these. We'll add... <coughs> I kind of want one... I don't want one white, I don't think. It's only for Dramoka. I do kind of want one black just for Nicobolus and Vraska. So we can search for it. Um, probably two islands. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... So we need 14 lands, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We get one more, go to 10. Sphinx's Rev is real tempting in the main deck. Man, that underwear on my head thing really got, you guys really, uh, that really hits you guys. If you don't play Bolas, I'll hit you again. What? What? What is this? What is this? A bit you're doing? I'll keep this hand. Uh, so here's the problem with Utopia Sprawl right now. We could name blue, and then if we hit red, we're in great shape. We could name... I think we just name red. Reason being, we have more blue sources than red sources. We are surprisingly close to a Nicol Bolas here, though. If we can hit a blue mana by turn turn three. Okay, we did it. <laughs> That's gas. All right, we'll play an island. And I'll just get another forest. Put the island in play. Wow, we get to Nicol Bolas in our mono green deck on uh, turn three. Well, it's going to get countered, I guess. I guess we're just going to run out of Citic Slime first. I have a feeling you're going to counter this, so. You just have to decide which counter spell you want to use. If you have the days, just... Oh, boy. If you didn't counter this, I can't imagine you have a counter spell. <laughs> okay, when we left, we were green, maybe splashing red. Now I'm back and there's a Nicol Bolas. I don't know why I expected anything else. <laughs> If that's my if that's my claim to fame, I'll take it, dude. Uh one, two, three, four. Now you have a counter spell. No. One, two, three, four, five. So we can also flip Nicobolus next turn. Nice lands, butt munch. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Cube is literally the best format in Magic, and if you're if 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 you're on social media posting pictures of your Dominaria and M19 drafts, all the Magic on Magic Online Dominaria and M19 drafts when the cube is up, there's a real problem happening. I feel safe to do this. Sure. I mean, we got four damage in, and we made you discard a card, and he's coming back down next turn, so. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I feel like we just tooth and nail here, put Woodfall Primus and Nicol Bolas into play. That's a lot of value. What's up, Denmark? Always a pleasure, buddy. Uh, also, I don't like I don't like our odds of casting this naturally with uh, Glenelg or Archmage in play, so I'd rather just get the value out of it. <clears throat> Good luck.
Man, kill a land, kill a Phyrexian Revoker, put 10 power on the board. I mean, I have a Vraska, and you had to tap out for that, so... It's not good. It's not good. I also cannot wait uh, for Guilds of Ravnica. Guilds of Ravnica looks like a very fun set to draft. Guilds of Ravnica is one of those sets where you're like, well, now I don't mind drafting a regular set. Whereas, like, you know, M19 was fine, but, like, you can only do it for so many. I, I don't think I have. I think when we did Dominary, we ended up with about six, 60 drafts, 60 Dominary drafts on YouTube. There's no way you attack with Glenn or Archmage, right? Like, that's real greedy. Half a case? You can do better than that. So, one, two. Turning the beat around. Give me back my bolus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. I don't think we need to play rampant growth here. Although it would it would thin our deck a little bit. How can people still buy large quantities of sealed product? Isn't cheaper in the long run to buy singles? Yeah, some people like opening packs. I know I do it. I like opening packs. I like the odds of hitting like a foil mythic rare. Uh, I like that you could buy a box promos. Um, sometimes you can draft with the sealed product. I mean, like, hey, there's lots of reasons to do it. Our deck is cool. I'm glad you... Axel, I'm glad you may put this uh, Utopia Sprawl on the deck. You like the odds of hitting? I don't like the odds of hitting a Foil Mythic. I like the potential to do it. I think it's I think that's fun. I mean I don't think the odds are high. I'm you know, I'm not a moron. <laughs> but No, I don't th I don't think playing the revelation was greedy. I would have probably done it. I am looking for a way to put this Colagon's command in here. Because I do, they do have Sower of Temptation. Might just be Bone Shredder. Bone Shredder might be better. I think I got Beast Within for a Bone Shredder. Have you seen what Guilds of Ravnica are doing to Blue Tron? The set is evil. What did they do into Blue Tron? Is there any talk about another Commander Knight? Yes, there there has been definitely talk. Um, in fact, someone already emailed me and they're like, "Hey, can I can I donate this much for this?" And I'm like, "Maybe." My only issue with like the donations feel like they should be like they donated stipulation the amount, which is like thirty five, and which is super fine. I but my only issue with that is that like it usually takes longer. Um, like the last Commander Knight was three hours. I'm gonna mulligan this hand, and if I have Mike here as well, like it's. It's time consuming for both of us. So I don't know. Like I will do it again, definitely. I, I actually had a good time with it. Oh, Ancestral Vision. How nice. Yikes. Alright, well. Any turn two ramp and we have four, five, six, seven. Okay, well that's an eight drop. <laughs> That's uh, complete the uh, the four five six. This 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 start is uh, significantly worse, which is sad. What do you name here? I'll name Nickel Bolas. Frasca Relic Seeker. That's a good choice. Okay, well, if that was like a cultivate, I would be real excited. That would be great.
Well, you don't get your money back, but it's not about getting your money back. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't think people understand this. Like, there are people that don't look at magic solely as an investment, right? Like, uh, I there's, there's a lot of times where I spend money on magic and I don't get my investment back. Like... Like, I'm not trying to get my money back. Like, you know, I, 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 it's a weird way to look at it. Well, you get a tooth and nail. Or a Garrick. You can get a Garrick. Garrick doesn't seem like he does a ton here, though, so. Also, we didn't see any of these, these black cards, so. Primus is like a Cultivate. Huh. Huh. You know, I had not considered this. I think you're right. Wow, that was rude. Well, we are drawing literally the wrong half of our deck here. Six, seven, seven, eight, eight. All right. Which way is weird? The one where you try to get your money back or not? The way the way the, the way that's weird is when you try to get your money back, like. I never go to a movie theater and be like, man, I just didn't get my money's worth out of this movie. Like, I didn't, I, they didn't give me 13 out of my $15 back. It's just a really fascinating way to view magic specifically. Like, whenever I buy a video game, I never look at it. Whereas, like, man, I hope, hope I can get 55 out of the $60 from this video game back. Like, it just doesn't happen. Like, most things you, most forms of entertainment you purchase, you don't get anywhere near the return, like, the, the, uh, the amount you put into it back. You just don't, you know, and um, I, I think it's fascinating that that not only like you, you are lucky enough to have magic cards that retain value, but like if you don't get the exact value that you put into it, then it's like, well, you just wasted money. I think we're just good like this. I think that that draw was pretty bad. Both those draws are pretty bad. I mean, also, Josh, if you're spending money on three, three boxes or whatever, and then you're cracking them and you're getting, like, months and months of standard use out of those, like, who cares? Like, you know, I mean, like, who cares how much you get back out of it? Like, you're playing for hours. You're literally getting hours of value out of those cards. And it's just, like, it's just weird to me that people are, are like, well, you, you didn't. So then she's a trading card game and inherently have some form of value you would expect. Right, of course, but... but whatever. Can you really put together a deck? No, of course not. But that's not the that's not the point. $60 games having loot boxes in them? I don't know what that means. The point is different people get different value out of different things in Magic. Like, sometimes you get value out of cracking packs. I personally enjoy cracking packs. I think it's fun. So, I mean, like, if that's where you're getting your enjoyment, like, who cares? If you, Who cares if you spend an extra $5 or $10... Like that's not that's not like everyone's primary concern. Yeah, like when a, when a twenty dollar card drops to five dollars on rotation, I mean, yeah, that's super upsetting. But you just got two and a half years of value out of that. You played with it every week. Like it's just so weird. Like if people just kind of forget that they like just don't. Oh, really? Yep, yep. Figured. Cool. But you only put sixteen lands in the deck. Why wouldn't you get mana screwed? Actually, unbelievable. I've been playing L4D for 10 years. I think I got money's worth compared to the 13 I spent watching the first Purge in the theater. 
Yeah. Okay, we're done. Just not even going to play this match. This is super sad. Like, our, our game one was fantastic, and then game two and three, we just get literally uh, draw the either top end of the deck or no lands. So, whatever. I love cracking packs too, but I sure feel like a sucker when I pay $30 in packs and get the equivalent of $10 in rares that I could have ordered online. Right, but... I mean, then you should have, then yeah, then you should have ordered online, you know? I mean, like, if you have that kind of buyer's remorse, then that's then that just says, like, for you, cracking packs is not the way to go. And I've definitely felt that too. I've definitely cracked some packs and been like, "Man, I wish I just bought the singles." It definitely happens. But as someone who 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 cracks packs, especially during like Kaladesh and stuff, where I was like, "Well, it's about one masterpiece per case, so I'll just crack these packs, and maybe I'll get a cool masterpiece that, you know, pays for a box and a half or two boxes." And that was pretty sweet. Also, getting a case of Ravnica. Ravnica does have the Planeswalker masterpieces in it, so that's actually a superb reason to uh, to crack Ravnica packs specifically. Oh, we got the the enemies. I would also rather draft than crack packs. However, it's not super easy to get a group of eight people together who also want to draft. At least, at least where I am, which is unfortunate. Valley man, thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back. Always a pleasure. As you know, as you well know. Masterpiece Walkers are only in the special box? Wait, what the hell does that mean? They're not in packs? I'm confused. Special packs from Wizards? Where do you get these? How do you get that? <laughs> 250 bones. It does have all the planeswalkers in it because that's pretty gas. I would buy that for 250. Does anyone have a link to that? I have no idea. Oh, I found it. Oh, on October 3rd. Okay. Oh, that's exciting. Well, I was hoping for a land here, but alas. I guess this guy's pretty good. Let's just cast Nicobolus if we hit any of the other colors. This is an elf. It's a human shaman. <clears throat> Wait, what now? So you do get the... It's guaranteed one Planeswalker, not eight. That's not what it says, though, right? It says, the twist is that the, that eight packs that will be clearly marked will each come with one Planeswalker inside. So eight packs come with a Planeswalker. Hmm. It's one, two, three, four. We have six mana. If we play Tender Shooty...
Oh boy. Well, I imagine I'm not getting these then. That is unfortunate. These would go straight into the cube. All right, I don't know what to do here. I guess it's Tender Shoot Dryad. I feel like that's pretty good. Although we do kind of want to deal with this Elspeth, I think. Solemn Simulacrum lets us be able to play Nicol Bolas and Beast with it on the Elspeth next turn, which is nice. Yeah, let's do one of these jobbies. Yep. Okay, so let's look. Uh, Dragonlord Tarka is a red. We can cast that. Vraska is the only thing we can't cast right now. Uh, so I'm going to get a black for Vraska. Also, we can't cast an Ugin off of a Shaman. So that's unfortunate. But one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven mana, so we can go Beast Within and Nicol Bolas on this. Beast Within on the Elspeth is pretty good. I don't really feel like dealing with Elspeth. Oh, I see. Wow. That was... That was something. One, two, three, four, five, six. I really don't want to tap this, but I guess I have to. I guess this is fine. So we'll have eight permanents when this untaps. So long, derogatory speaker. That's good stuff. I mean, if they wanted to, they can make it in a 9-9 flyer, sure. Seems good. Oh, wow. That is not what I expected you to do. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do -do 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 All right, let's get.
It's got a mountain. It makes Jermoka relevant if we hit Jermoka. Blue doesn't really do much for us here. Oh, we have to attack Gideon, sure. You got it. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we can hit Ugin in the negative six, it's actually extremely good. Cool. Cool. I mean, my dragon deck is cooler when I can actually play these dragons. Yep, that's what I figured you'd do. Yeah, we're still two turns away from casting Ugin because they're just able to kill all of our things with the Gideon. Not really worth playing this out. <coughs> what does a Johnny do? Meh. I feel like Maelstrom Pulse is pretty good here. Beans and cornbread burnt beans and cornbread. I don't like mouse sounds, Amazon. Oh, wow. Wow, my bad, Matthew Ori. My bad. What up to Mike Hypothesis? Good to see anybody. Alright, can we not go oh can we not go one two in this draft? That's all I want. I think our deck looks cool. It might be it's extremely ambitious though. Thought you guys should all know that Frank is an awesome <laughs> Get out of here. You can get out of here. I had a Frank Moe yesterday in Commander with some friends. Guy was playing an arcade deck, top deck, and aura shields, shards. Played four walls in her off the top of his deck and blew up all my mana rocks. That's that's what happens to opponents, right? It was a very table flip moment. That sound that just sounds like what happens to me, right? That's what we're that's what we're implying here. I uh, actually registered for pre check today. That was pretty sweet. 
done are the day, behind me are the days of uh taking off jackets and uh shoes and belts in airport securities i will play first i'll keep this hand all day this hand is great for 85 dollars for five years that's absolutely insane i thought it was i thought it was like per year or something for the amount I've traveled, I actually feel really dumb for not getting it sooner. I mean, it breaks down to like, what is that? Like $17 a year? Really? This is where you're going to be? So next time we can go Tree Speaker and Cultivate. Yeah, also the bonus, it's it's funny because I'm like, so wait, basically what I'm paying for, what I'm paying $85 for is to go back to like 2000, 1999. So you basically get to try, you're paying to travel like it's 1999 again. What am I trying to hide from the TSA? Well, clearly I'm not trying to hide anything or else I wouldn't have made, I wouldn't have qualified for pre-check. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Let's get a blue and a red. This is where they go land, Gideon, kill your channeler. Beans and cornbread. You gonna crack that windswept heath? Tonight we're gonna travel like it's nineteen. Wow, that's a that's a interesting dude. One, one, two. So we have six mana. Seems good. So we basically have nothing here. So we can put a counter on the tree speaker. One, two, then we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. If they can get rid of the, the forest, the four, four, they can also get rid of Nissa, which is pretty bad. All right. Let's see what happens. No attacky. Hey, boy. We have a lot of mana. One, two, three, four, five, six. Presuming they get rid of this and they get rid of this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight mana. So it's not terrible if they get rid of Nissa, but. Frontier is pretty rough. If it wasn't terrible for you, that is that is alright. $39 is a good deal. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you can deal with Frontier or Spirit. Uh, my cube is not pimped out. I actually like it as plain as possible. I don't like 
curved foils. I don't like promo cards. I don't like, well, I don't mind promos, but I, I, I try to like have it all uniform. And I also have try to have everything in English because I don't want to assume, uh, the familiarity level, the people who are playing with it are going to have. So plus I just don't want to put that much money into it. Like I would rather just have a regular cube and, and play like the most straightforward versions of cards. Like for Sylvan library, I might, I like to have the most recent printing just so it's, uh, has the most concise, like straightforward Oracle wording. Uh, I don't have a list yet because I'm still working on it. Uh, no text descriptive commands. No, I want I want everyone to be able to clearly see what modes are on there. And it's also super like warped. Like that card, it's real hard to keep straight. Here comes uh, treachery. Fantastic. <sighs> oh, I don't play with a lot of new players, but I play with, like, I mean, I don't really want to... leave someone out just because they don't know also like sometimes you just want to make sure the card does exactly what you think it does because you play with a lot of more obscure cards in cube Fuck, of coal oh. <sighs> yeah cube isn't for new players cube is for anyone who wants to play cube isn't it like, I don't think there's any kind of skill requirement to cube. Like, you draft cards. And also, it's not, you don't have to be a new player to not know the exact wording on Sylvan, Sylvan Library. You don't have to be a new player to, to not know the exact wording on Animate Dead either. Like, I mean, I could be play, I could be, I could be a player, I could be playing Magic for five years. That doesn't mean I know every single mode of Cryptic Command if I'm exclusively standard. Like, I mean, it, there's just no reason to not have uh, more clear and concise cards in a cube when, when you, when you're able to. Like, <clears throat> yep. Cool. I think understanding power level is a big part of cube as well, but you don't have to do well at cube to, to play cube, to draft cube. Like, just because you're drafting cube and you don't actually understand power levels doesn't mean you can't draft the cube. It just means you probably won't do as well. And that's still fine. It's still... Uh, I haven't seen the cube draft SCG is doing, so I have no idea. Now we're gonna party like it's nineteen ninety nine. Never, never don't have it. Needed that for this Nissa, but. What can you do? Guess we'll just pass here. I mean, then Nissa just dies, right? I guess we can block with a wolf. I 
I'm just gonna untap lands here because if we actually make a guy, we just have one more creature that dies to uh, a removal spell. Or right now we have two blockers. You know what? That's just fine. We're going to negative six. And it's going to be grand. I think that's actually okay. We got a seven. Nissa. Nissa, Nissa. Nissa, Nissa, Nissa. No, not Nissa. 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 Everybody go to Nissa. Eh, hey, but Nissa don't care. Looking like a snack? I don't even know what that means. Uh oh. New York, LA. It's about to do one, two, three, four, five. Get it out of here. That's a cool dude. Yep, feels pretty bad. Feels bad, man. We just had to hope they didn't have anything, but they did. So. What's the Italian hand? The chef's kiss? Because this does not seem like the ideal turn to do that. I mean, you can tell this actually is a fair magic card because it costs eight mana and uh, we lost our cards as well. And then they played a creature that we actually have no way to deal with, so. I mean, I would say Scarab God is a, f a fair and fun magic card. Yep, next game. All right, this deck is not performing at all. I, f I imagine it's because we're a little too greedy with it, and that's fine. What can you do? Sometimes you get a little greedy with your decks. I'm putting Cold Steel Heart instead of Channeler Initiate, just because it seems like they have easy ways to kill creatures like Channeler Initiate. I don't think our mono green deck is very good, unfortunately. The first game did seem too good. It was it was very uh It was basically what you want to be doing every single time, but here we are. Yeah, I don't think our mono green deck is very good. Yep. Sure. Any land on top and we're good. Any land on top, I said. They're just going to fail push it on turn one, so that's fine. <laughs> They're going to wait for me to bump it. Oh, man. It's okay, dude. Joke's on you. I don't actually have a second land. There you go, congratulations. Wait a minute, I'll do the correct play and kill it when you activate it. <laughs> oh, stop saying cuck. Oh, it's such an offensive... I hate that word so much, dude. <laughs> um, no, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> 
Kind buds, appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you for understanding. We have literally seven pieces of ramp in the deck. No, I wouldn't know. <laughs> There's at least one zero that is far for sure, but it's not a contest, so. None of these lands do anything. All right. This was a, this was an interesting experiment. It might be more than seven, actually. I would like to take a look and... Ah, oh, it is really raining. Okay, one down. Nicol Bolas incoming. Block, we take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yep, we're... Oh, look who it is. Fantastic. All right. Well, that was an O3. That was a... This is our second O3 ever. Um, I would like to see... View the deck... Okay, leave me alone. Okay, so ramp spells. Are you seriously not going to let me move these things? Wow, that's really amazing. F quality programming. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I guess it was just seven. We have Solemn, so kind of like eight. And we drew like Channeler and Solemn, I believe. Anyway, what can you do? Sometimes you just lose them. I thought our deck looked cool. Um, we just had too many high-end things and not enough middle middle things. So, Thanks for watching. really appreciate it. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Check me out on Patreon and Twitch. Both the links are in the description below. If you're watching on Twitch, I'm not leaving. I'm literally just ending the YouTube video, which I do every single time. Uh, and I'll uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.